Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang and you're listening to the TO podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. How are you going, boys? Yeah, good, Mate, Chief. welcome back. It's been uh, a while. I know it's been a while. Uh, we've Long all been busy. Between drinks. We also had conference. We had all these things. So it's been a while. It's also our last one for this year, so you might as well enjoy it. And hence this this one here, we've gone all out. And um, Some of us have. Two of us have gone all Increase our budget. Yeah, right. Increase <laughs> our budget. Right. So, so let's have a look. Well, listen. The, the, the losers this time is going to have to be punished then, you know? I mean, <laughs> this is how we should work. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chris, would you like to just serve as the first one? All right. We're doing yours. The first one, no, that's going to have to be mine. Yeah. Because it's the so uh, youngest first? we have. 2014, yeah. St. Henry Shiraz. And, uh, well, we don't need to really talk too much about the St. Henry. We all know. Uh, beside RWT and Grange, well, we have St. Henry. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't aware. And so let's try this one here and see. I had to decanter it so that I had a chance of winning. <laughs> Price, mate? Price, uh, $125. So when we said increase the budget, oh, we didn't say increase the budget. We said no budget for this one. Yeah. Two of us got the message. Yeah, that's correct. Cheers, boys. Cheers, cheers mate. To a great Christmas. Cheers, huh? cheers. cheers, boys. That's nice. It's okay. <laughs> All That's right, so nice let's uh, let's kick in with uh, this week's um, subject. We're coming to uh, the end of the year again, and I thought that maybe this time we should talk a little bit about how this year maybe team members would be gauging their leaders because some people would be sitting down at the end of this year thinking, well, I haven't achieved much or I have achieved great, right? And to me, in the end, it always boils down to the leadership you have around you. You have great leadership, it's going to be great. No matter what, stormy weather or not, and you have bad leadership, even in the best conditions, you're not going to make it. So, what kind of leadership have you seen this, this year in in real estate? We've been speaking about that a fair bit throughout the podcast, haven't we? This year has been mm. quite up and down. Yeah, um, some leaders have had have, it really hit their straps and come into their own and understand how to handle crisis, and then, then some have struggled. Towards the end of this year, though, maybe a little bit different. Coming into Christmas, I think some people have probably put into neutral already, ready for the break, because it's been a challenging year. They're going, thank God this is almost over. Yeah. And then probably there's some leaders out there that are still pushing for the last the last sales and the last listings for the year. So what are your staff thinking? You're in a management position, so what are, what are your staff going into the break thinking? Probably not, not the best to ask me, because we've only got, like myself and one other at the moment, what we're doing is probably putting a lot of things into place that we should have done as you know years ago, which were things like a happy client list, you know, your 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 fans, a client fan base. Yeah. So we're starting to put that into place, starting to deliver a lot more um, Christmas cheer out to the sort of the neighbourhood and so forth. Next year we're growing the team, which has started already. Rob's interviewing quite a lot, so what the team's feeling is very hard to sort of. It's very hard to talk about across as a whole because every office is going to be different. Right. Every staff member is going to be having different feelings based on their results, based on how the year's gone in general. Probably, is it, would it be fair to say probably not even based on how the year's gone? Most people, we've got short memories, right? So probably based on what they're going home with for Christmas, more so from the last quarter. That Obviously, that's going to be more front of mind. Well, I don't know how... Well, I've only ever been in real estate in one office, so I don't know how other offices do it. But I think... The Christmas party is a good time to celebrate those who've done well and those who've maybe have been a fantastic support member or been on and tried their hardest, take them aside and have that bit of a word of encouragement to them and make them realise what potentially is out there for them with seeing the ones that have succeeded for the year and helping them set up for the following year with uh, a few glasses of red or you know a couple of beers and a good feed and be able to get out of the office and have that one-on-one connection and yeah. really get them to open up. Yeah, I, I find that this year the worst in people have come out and the best in people have come mm. out. So I have seen leaders who started to scheme around things and uh, have done things behind others back, you know. And I'm always thinking if I was to work in a team like this, I'd be asking myself the same questions. Should I trust this leader of mine? 
behind? Because if he's doing this behind other people's back, what is he going to do to me when I fall out of favor, right? So we've seen a, a lot of that. The, the greed in leaders have come out. And I'm not just talking about organization. I'm talking about real estate in general. When, when I visit even other offices, I see leaders who will say to their team, right, I don't want you to be discussing um, things within our office with other offices and, and, and make sure that you keep things secret because this is what I'm planning on doing. And I'm always thinking, if a leader is talking like this to his own team, do you know what he's going to do to his own team behind their back? As if the same agenda doesn't apply to you when he's trying to do it to others, you know? So that's one. And I've seen on the total opposite, people who would put their team first, no matter what. Yeah. Who this year have embraced Zoom and have, it's not about them doing Zoom all the time, but when they can't do it, they organize for their management team to take over. And they've been probably more in contact with their team now than ever before. Yeah. And they've been more giving than ever before. It's just an amazing thing. It's been definitely a time for those, I, I think we mentioned it before, to shine a light on people's true colours. And it, it really has brought out, you know, separated the cream from the milk, so to speak. But I think there's an opportunity for a lot of leaders to be able to consolidate with their team now, those who are with them, and really build a fantastic team into, into next year and really start building strong. And I think it starts with uh, celebrating a year, whether it's been a struggle year or it's been an outstanding year, because I know some offices have struggled and I know some offices have done very, very well for themselves. Whatever it may be, I think it's a very good time at the, this time of year to do that. I think a lot of us get caught up in that holiday spirit and um, start to really start to wind down a little bit too soon trying to avoid that myself, um, but it's it's hard when you're not getting anywhere with all the calls. It's easy. We, I think we named it last year. We had this talk last year about catching December. It's very easy to catch December. Uh, I named it an illness last year because I remember this time last year, everything was just <laughs> mental and it was um, Darren Butcher who explained to me, he said, mate, it's you catch December. Everyone goes nuts, buyers, sellers, staff, owners, leaders, they see the uh, finishing line. It does strange things to you. We've talked to you before about how it makes a lot of people sick because they've been fighting off illness all year and then yeah. you see the finish line. So uh, it's been a concerted effort to not catch December too early. We're, we're finishing a week earlier than a lot of others this year. We finish this Saturday. Um, okay. When are you going back? 4th of Jan. Okay. And it's a case of everyone needs a break. It has been a long year, and that's not in a negative sense. It's been a long year. I haven't had any time off myself. The staff that are still with us haven't had any time off themselves. And and the best thing we can do moving into next year is come back first week, fired up, ready to go, but take a break. Like take, take a couple of weeks. You know, the world's not going to fall in a heap having a couple of weeks off. I know there's some officers working right up till Christmas Eve and back almost straight away, and if they're all in the... Um, physical shape to do it and the mental shape to do it then great but there's nothing wrong I don't think either with taking five minutes to have a deep breath and and yeah. let yourself recover you know we're we're physical beings and um it, it has been one of them years but I think we'll talk about it a bit later too it has been one of them years and it hasn't yes we've had this thing called coronavirus but that's just the thing before that it was bushfires and before that it was market crashes and before that it was floods and hail storms and so it's just been a different thing this year, yeah. right? and and I think it's important for people's mindsets going into the break. They remember that too. You know, twenty twenty hasn't necessarily been any worse than any other year in in a lot of ways. It has in a lot of ways as well. But um, I guess we've got to be careful if if someone is going into the holiday break on poor results. It'd be very easy to blame the year, but there's also people going into the break with the best results they've ever had. So what's the yeah. difference between that person and that person, and uh, don't so, don't spend Christmas finding an excuse for your own mediocrity, poor results. Yeah. You know, because that'll be easy to do. It'll be easy to blame twenty twenty. But two years before that, guys in real estate for two years, we had a, a down market and a, you know the the bank and royal commission, all that stuff. So real estate hasn't been easy for a long time. So don't sit there blaming twenty twenty. So on that on that point, you, you I believe you guys had your Christmas party was it during the week, I think, or last, last Saturday. Last yeah. Saturday. And uh, got yeah, a thanks for the invite again. Oh, yeah. I got a, mate, you wouldn't know. Honestly, <laughs> I've got a bone to pick. I won't name the place, but Shady Palms at Avoca 
to spend the amount of money on alcohol we did and not have one person get drunk or hung over the next day, they were 100% watering down the drinks. I'm calling them out. There was 150 people in that place and no one was sideways in the slightest. I drank that much Jack Daniels, I should have been dead. And instead I dug, I did nine hours of bloody yard work the next day. So calling them out, you, so, you would have enjoyed the water, mate. Get, tasted like one of your wines. <laughs> getting back to what I was getting to is did you take that opportunity at the Christmas party to, to thank or to really inspire those team members that were by your side all, all year and did well? And did you take the time to those maybe who needed a little bit more inspiration, a little bit more uh, hand around the shoulder, say, mate, chin up next year, let's do this together? Sort very, of very small sample size, mate. There was there was six of us there. Yeah, okay. Um, so it wasn't the year before. I think we had 24 people on that bus driving around the Hunter. So yeah, right, very, okay. very different. Um, the the environment probably wasn't there for that. But we, we try and do that almost on a daily basis, mate, with our people anyway. You, you've got to. The, the people who need a high five, get a high five. And the people who need a hug, get a hug, hopefully. And um, yeah, there wasn't any – the short answer to your question is no, there was no special recognition. But yeah, right. if, I mean, it's a strange thing. One of the staff said to me, oh, we're so lucky because my sister had her um, Christmas party the night before and she works for a major corporation. They made all their staff pay their own way for absolutely everything. So just the fact that we shouted a night at – Shady Palms, yeah, they were, they were extremely grateful for the recognition in that way, I guess. So. Was it with partners? Yeah. With partners, yeah, that's good. That's good. Always, always. One in all in, mate, you can't – I don't know if it's a subject we've touched on much in here, but sometimes, especially with your staff, the most important people are the people they're going home to because right. they can either make or break them, you know. So part of getting everyone on the same page and everyone buying into the, your success is having the partners on side as well and – um, yeah, you know, our guys are lucky and we're lucky that they're all good people, all their spouses, and um, no, it's always a good time. So, oh, that's good. So, why are you asking that question? How about your party? Christmas party? Yeah, it's gonna, this Saturday. Oh, this Saturday. So, no, this Saturday it. night. So, this Ooh. Saturday night. And again, the team's quite small at the moment. Uh, so, there's, there's not going to be a like there has been in past year where there's been quite a few numbers. Uh, so, I think it's going to be a really sort of intimate feel this time, really like a dinner with friends this time rather than a Christmas party. Yeah. But uh, oh, I, for myself personally, I love Christmas. I love this time of year. It's the, my favourite part of the year. Uh, but it's, not, it doesn't have break, to be a small dinner, does it? I mean, f- for my part, I haven't seen Christmas arrive. I, I have to say that I woke up in shock to find out that Christmas is next week. Yeah. Mm. And that has never happened to me before. But really, whether it's a Christmas party with its staff or not, it doesn't have to be a small dinner party because really, in the end, it's still a Christmas party. The, a leader still has to work. So a manager right. still has to work, yep. right? And it's not about the size of the team. It, you still have like uh, quite a few people in the team. I know that. So sometimes we actually the one who uh, might be diluting the event. Yep. Remember for the, the staff, whether it is a smaller one than last year, for them... It's a Christmas party. Yeah, and the question is, what is it that we're doing to make sure that they feel that way, yeah. right? Rather than trying to dilute it and make it something small because it's a COVID year. Yeah, no. We were sat up on stage beyond the DJ. It was loud. As I sent you a video of it, we had, we had a great time. I think it was just we worked out that, hang on a minute, why isn't anyone falling down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a Christmas party of ours unless someone's getting done doing a nudie run or... or <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Getting getting certain CEOs kicked out of beer gardens or oh yeah I don't know it was a bit oh, hell well. <laughs> that's all I meant by small mate it wasn't the usual um but what about salespeople that we're talking about all this you know what about salespeople what did they really do to contribute and we we're talking about the quality of the leadership but it also tells you the quality of the salespeople around what did they do this year to really contribute to a great year well yeah it's it's well, you're talking to two guys who've, who've lost parts of or most of teams throughout the year, mate. So we've had one. Yeah, but you guys are talking, mate. Doom and gloom. Can, no, it's can not we doom just and gloom, stop this? Asking we have a team. Let's talk about team. Let's talk yeah. about the people who are there. Let's not give the people who are not there another five minutes of fame. No, but you're asking you, we us have a, a team. About- so. What kind of team members have we got? And, for example, you had the party already. How was the team member that was there? Did they feel like... And don't don't tell me it is, uh, what is it, uh, Shady Beach, whatever, Shady Palms. <laughs> yeah? Did you make them feel like this is about you? Yeah. I think Th- That's the key, right? Yeah. yeah. I think um, 
it often isn't until you get into those environments that especially the new people won't will feel included. I think well, included is a shit word, but you know, I guess you're not really part of the team until you've partied with the team. That's true. In some that's a good um, point. That's a good point. in some aspects and, and you know, the young bloke that's that's come on with us recently, it was his first time to really outside of work get down with the team and um, and he, he had a great time. Okay. Um, so I, I, what I found this time of the year is it's been quite interesting because this year for us has been a, a little bit, you know, up and down. But coming through the end of this year, it's seen a real change within our leadership's mindset, yeah. which is good, which has bled through down through the team. And I can see the team actually getting excited about next year. Um, doing things that they wouldn't normally do, even leadership starting to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And I can see that is already starting to have an effect on our client base with, you know, emails and text messages and phone calls back into the office saying, "That's oh, amazing." You want to share with us what is it that's been oh, done? Oh, we're just we're just simply it's a, an an Italian Christmas cake that we're delivering to our customers, and we've I think we've got to go get another batch because we've run out, but we're putting a, a, a Christmas card with them, hand delivering it, saying Merry Christmas, hope you have family, have a, a great Christmas, giving them some serving suggestions for the for this Christmas cake. And then um, some of those people aren't home, so we might leave it on their doorstep. And we're getting calls and emails back into the office, people so appreciative, even partners coming home and seeing it on the counter. Uh, we had one customer send us pictures of their son finishing off the last bit. I think it lasted in their house for about half an hour before the whole cake was demolished. Yeah. That sort of thing was is something we hadn't done before, which we should have done. But the difference is already visible and you can feel it. And it actually, that giving is contagious coming back into the office. And it's, it's creating a really nice vibe within the team. Yeah. And you can see it throughout. So Christmas cards and Christmas cards with scratchies in them and, and the Italian Christmas cake to customers and so forth. It's, it's just really doing really, really well. Yeah. So, so we, we're talking about the leadership. I mean... Have you seen many leaders already starting to talk about goals and goal setting with their team members and, and, and sitting down and paying attention since they're about two weeks from the end of a year to take a little bit of that ownership of their team members' goals and, and, and show them that, hey, I'm going to take part of that journey in 2021 to make that happen? I haven't seen it personally, but I know that we've got a goal setting session coming up and, and team members are talking about, so look, I'm... I really need to start thinking about my goals because I think a lot of people don't think about it until the beginning of the new year. I don't think people pause enough and, and reflect and give themselves that time to work out, okay, this year's almost done. Let's celebrate what we've done. But what am I going to do next year? Let's, let's be prepared before I need to be. Yeah, but to do the new year, they'll be like waiting for the the bell to go off on Sydney to Hobart on the 26th Boxing Day. And then, uh, so on Boxing Day, you're starting to prepare your sale. Maybe that's a bit late, no? <laughs> you're right. I think it's a danger of catching December too early. A lot of people Again, are just yep. pushing to get to the end of the year yeah. and let next year be next year. And it, it's a hard, I know now we've had a more of a focus on setting targets to get us to Christmas and yep. earning, feeling, going on holidays, feeling like we've earned the right. Yep. That, that was sort of the motto we've been using for the the last sort of four to six weeks. So hand up, guilty as charged. We haven't had any focus on next year's goals, to be completely straight with you, because it's all about there was starting to be a lot of talk about, ah, oh, there's only five weeks to on holidays. Ah, oh, there's only this. So it was more about, no, 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 let's let's refocus and set the goals, really short-term goals. Yeah. Really short-term. And, it, it, I mean, it gave us a good, a big run into the end of the year. We were sitting on not a lot of listings um two or three weeks ago and we sat down as a team and came up with a goal we wanted to hit before Christmas. doesn't look like we're going to hit it, but just trying for it brought the team a bit closer together and everyone was sort of working towards a common short-term goal and all of a sudden we're going into Christmas with stock to, to come out uh, kicking ass at the start of January. So it's something I've probably got to sit back and, and pay a bit more attention to is everyone's goals early first quarter 2021 or first month 2021. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think... It, uh, the main focus was definitely not letting people catch December too early. You know, you said five weeks ago, people were talking about the holidays and so forth. Yeah. And so was it you that said, hang on, guys, we've still got five weeks left in this. Well, let's sit down. And yeah, 100%. I got I copped a bit of grief because the girls wanted to put the Christmas tree up halfway through November. And I, was, I, I, I said, no. And they said, you're a Grinch. And I said, no, I'm not a Grinch. So said, we're starting to think holidays. And we're not there. We're not, we're not there yet, guys. We need to keep our head in the game a bit. And it wasn't, it wasn't just the Christmas tree. It was the talk around it at the same time. If it was just the Christmas tree, 100%, 
put it up yeah, and, and have a bit of fun. But because at the, the same time, the like, whole, yeah. uh, all of a sudden I'm hearing people count down to the holidays and now we're going to put a Christmas tree up and oh, I can't wait to have a break. It was a, it was more of a let's let's take a deep breath and let's refocus. And, and we, it was I remember the meeting. It was quite a good meeting. Everyone was involved and everyone contributed to switching our heads back on. Um, it was your agenda for that meeting to do that, to to go in there and say, Cal, guys, we're yeah, 100%. heading off track. It was something I'd noticed. And look, it, it, yeah, again, complete transparency, it's something I'd noticed in myself. Okay, well. There was, okay, there was a time probably two months ago where all I wanted was – Let's just make it to the end. Let's just keep. <laughs> let's just keep Thomas chugging, like, and Thomas the tank engine. I mean, not Thomas La Um But let's just keep on chugging until we till we get there. But it was only it was only short lived because I caught myself doing it. Yeah, well. And I didn't do it publicly, and I, I didn't do it in front of team or staff. Yep. It was just something I noticed in myself where I was just looking for anything to get us to the end. Come on and. Uh, it was, it's funny because whether I, I didn't have to vocalise it public because clearly that energy or, or whatever was telepathised into the, the team because I started to hear them talking about it. So you know how we say the leader's attitude determines the office altitude, right? So yeah. that that attitude that you had bled through the team, right? And yeah. then it's good that you've caught yourself and let's change this and you've changed it as a team. Do you think you could have changed yourself if you didn't have your team with you? Do you think that as a group that group vibration helped you to change that mindset moving towards oh, that it helped make me more aware and well it helped me even though i thought i was suffering in uh private realize that it was starting to bring people with me so so probably not if i didn't have a team to take care of or, or a team whose goals i had to help meet or people i had to help get paid there probably wouldn't have been as much inspiration to right to keep going i mean the bill's Bills were covered on my end, sort of thing, and, and so that's having that team helped you change your mindset. Them being there, you know, like, yeah. Do you guys believe that? <clears throat> what, first of all, I'm going to ask you then this question: When did you put the Christmas tree up? Oh, it was it was early. It was December. It was, it was okay. so. Here it is. We we have been talking about like the more fun in an office, usually, the more results you create. So let's have a look at the other side of the coin. What if a team put up a tree in November or early November and spoke about that, what is it, Chris Kringles within the team. Yeah. And then what if the team put up some big goals in order to make those Chris Kringle big yeah. for everyone? How about that? Would that have generated maybe also the same yeah. kind of impetus or energy? Yeah, potentially, but do you think that there may be some leaders who in the head – couldn't see that, wouldn't be able to do that. They would, for, for, want, for want of a better word, for maybe the vision, having a sense of lack within their own personality, they can't do that. They go, well, let's do it December because of that. I and I'm not it. pointing a finger no, at No, no, it still went up. The girls won the argument. They always do, <laughs> right? So let's be clear on that. But it also made me call that meeting and go, guys, we've got to stay focused. Well, I didn't see the upside to it. Maybe I am the Christmas Grinch. But it wasn't about stopping fun in the office. It no, was, no, this is a question, mate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's yeah. worked for you, so it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's fine. About, it's about – we all know, and I know myself, the more fun in the office, generally the better the mood, the better the mood, the better the results and all that sort of stuff. But it was – it. People probably could have used it to a benefit. Uh, here's, a, here's the thing that I noticed. The moment that the Christmas tree was up in our house, presents start to appear. Mm -hmm. So what if we put the Christmas tree about the second week of December? Would that then make people in the family rush out for presents and only think about presents then? So uh, I just don't know. Is there a correlation between when you start putting that Christmas tree and suddenly get the team to start thinking about this, or when you start thinking and preparing for Christmas, do you, do you really get the energy to go that way? And Christmas is a bloody good energy. It's it's an energy where people are thinking about giving, thinking about others. So what if a great leader start to use that and say, all right, let's make Chris Kringle not 20 bucks. Let's make it $100, Chris Kringle, or $200. And what we're going to do is that the office, if we can reach these kind of targets, can, will pay for, it. Pay for this percentage of the Chris Kringle. How about that? Yeah. Do you think that it would have given the energy to someone in the support team to say, hey, guys, come on, go out there because I want my Chris Kringle? Yeah. 
Yep. We did that without the Chris Kingle. We, we, we set a target, and the target, if it got met, there was going to be a lot of money on a bar out of my pocket. It was, guys, we're having a big drink. If we get to Christmas with nine listings, and I think we had, I think it was four weeks to go when we set it. Um, and for us, in our office, nine listings in that four weeks would have been huge, especially given the, the stock levels we were on. So, yeah, yeah, there was money involved, and there were people who said it was exactly that. The support people said... I can let's, let's go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Okay, so here is going back to what I said at uh, the beginning. When team members really gauge their leaders at, at the end of this year, I know for certain that some team members actually gauge the leadership in their office by even how the Christmas party has been celebrated. I'm not even talking about the whole year. I, I was supposed to ask about, all right, how was the leadership during the year? How was the leadership after the kind of semi-lockdown has been removed? How, how was it, you know, when we got close to the end of this year? I'm talking about, there are people who are actually thinking about leaving an office mainly because of the way that they've been treated during a Christmas party. Mm. You know, it's like the, the talk can sometimes go like, like this. I can't believe they made so much money and this is how they treat us at a Christmas party. Mm. You, you think about this. This is what I'm talking about. Isn't it when team members sit down and gauge the leadership in their office? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah I've seen it and heard it. There was, you know, last year, we'd, like I said, we did a Hunter Valley couple of days or, or a day and everyone's friends invited and, and um, you know, 20, 20 odd, two people on a bus and bloody friends and family and stayed overnight and, I know of people at another office who got given 300 bucks to spend at a local club and the staff were filthy and all that feedback came back through because they'd seen what we'd done and what others were doing and the, and their thought was, their thing was, we just got no appreciation for sticking it out for the year and, and doing that. And whether that's the right mindset or the wrong mindset, it is the mindset. You know, and, and it's something you shouldn't have to, look, you shouldn't have to go and spend and I've never done it, but you shouldn't have to go and spend ten thousand dollars on a Christmas party just to keep your staff happy. Yeah, yeah. but there also has to be. You're right, mate. Yeah. It, it, you you probably don't even have to spend a hundred dollars, but if it's done the right way, right? And if it's done the right way, then they oh, feel oh. the appreciation. If it's done in a way where there's no effort put into it at all, and you clearly haven't. I'll disagree with you there, Cam, because I know of and 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 I've experienced it with with. You know, in past years, where I've been to Christmas parties where a lot of effort been put in, and we've gone to the leader's home and had an amazing Christmas party. But there's been salespeople going, "Well, why are we having a party at home? Why can't we go to a nice restaurant?" Well, there'll be a lot less effort, and it will just take a monetary incentive. Where for me, the effort put in at someone's home, being invited through their front door, means a lot more to me than going to a nice restaurant. Not to say that I don't appreciate a nice restaurant. But There's always going to be people who are ungrateful. Right, and that, that's right. what I mean. I'm not saying it is the right mindset because yeah, yeah. those people probably need to have a good hard look in the mirror, not right. at their leaders. Right. What I was saying was regardless of the money spent about the atmosphere you create, you could spend $100 and have a day playing tennis, golf, down the beach, whatever, and people are going to remember that as one of the great days with team and family, whereas going to a dive bar and spending a couple of hundred dollars and saying fend for yourself... But I, look, I think it, you know Christmas party is a crescendo to the actions you've done throughout the whole year with that uh, staff member. So if you don't have connection with that staff member, then or it takes us up. They will to find any kind of excuse right, right to blame. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? So really, at this time of the year, hence, hence, there's so many people looking for new jobs at this time of the year, and not not just from a real estate office to another real estate office. I'm talking about from every other industry, you know, to another industry, you know. This, it's somehow people get to this level of the year and they sit there and they really contemplate. How has my year been? Has it moved forward? Has it gone backward? Is, is there, was there anything that improved? And if there was nothing that really improved, could I have done it by myself or could, should I have really planned it somewhere else? You know, I, I think that this time of the year, it is such a, an important moment for people to uh, reevaluate almost everything and, and it's a funny thing. Why do we have to have this time of the year to do that? I mean, you really, you should be evaluating or reevaluating your, your life every now and then, but it doesn't have to be at the end of the year, right? But people do that, don't they? Question. It's symbolic kind of dates. It is, it is. And well, it's a timing thing. You're not, you don't have to turn up to work the next day, so you've got, a, you've got time for one. But 
We all seem to set goals at this time of the year. Or we all seem to rehash of what's going through the year this year. But a question for you, Teal, and it's more of an advice question for people who are listening who are reevaluating or evaluating themselves. Through what lens or lenses should they be doing it this year? Because I know I said before, apart from the pandemic, 2020 hasn't been any different. But one of the big things to come out of 2020 is if you've still got a job, you're lucky in a sense. There was a lot of pressure put on employers throughout the year, and that's never happened before. So when you get to the end of the year and say, oh, they've done nothing for what lens should staff or, or, or people be looking at their leaders through, do you think? Uh, man, that is a bloody good question because it's, but it's unfortunately not what lens should because I have realised that everyone's different. I have really tried to spread the message of giving and of looking after one another and looking after the other person. I have noticed that a lot of people have been looking after themselves. And as they've been looking after themselves, as if they were leaders, all that they want is that ability for themselves to survive with their business. And if they were a team member, what they want is now a little bit more time to themselves with their own family and how to make their life a bit easier. There has been actually less this year in businesses where people are really thinking about, all right, I understand we're going through this pandemic, but I'm still one of those lucky ones to have a job and I'm going to make this job a better place and I'm going to contribute. Vice versa, as a leader, there has been less leaders really thinking, I'm going to make this business a better place for my own people. They're going through upheaval. Many of them are probably do know of, of someone who is losing their job. Many of them are probably having to stay away from their loved ones. And therefore, I'm going to make at least the work environment a much better place for them. Mm. And this year, I would say the key word has been selfishness. There's been a lot of that happening. And it doesn't matter, mate. You, If there's one thing I've learned out of this year is maybe I have lost a little bit of hope sometime in, in some of my dreams, aspiration. And some of my dreams, aspiration is that I do truly believe that people are good. Mm. And from how I've been treated with uh, some people in our offices uh, who, who's left and uh, some people who are doing the wrong thing behind my back or don't know that I know, I, I just shake my head. I, I'm not running a cult, so I'm not going to control anyone. But you can always do things right. Mm. You know, I think in life, everyone's got the freedom to live their own life. Mm. But I think that you can live your own life without harming others or spreading harm, mm. you know, hurt or pain. I guess, I guess what I was, I was thinking is of all the years, it's a strange year to sit there and complain about or, or have thoughts about, oh, we've had a shit Christmas party so the bosses can go and get fucked, you know, because to still have a job. Oh, to I, I think you're going to gonna get that regardless. Yeah, yeah, no, I just think of all the yeah. times to do it. And that's why I'm saying about what lens. I think I know we've all got short-term memories, right? I know that's one of our – the beauties and the, the flaws of being a human being is that we, we can forget real quick when it suits us. And if anyone is sitting there di- and, and they, they're sitting there going, oh, I didn't have a good Christmas party and, and judging the leaders by that, maybe think back nine months. Maybe think back six months. Maybe – I had a conversation with someone yesterday at lunch and they said, oh, I can't wait for New Year's Eve. I'm just going to say, fuck you, 2020. I said, hang on, aren't you aren't you at a recruit course for a new career? She said, yeah, but only just. I said, but you're here. She said, yeah, but I nearly went broke. I said, yeah, but you didn't. Yeah, but I had this operation. Yeah, but you survived. And she's like, oh, oh you're right. I said, fucking love 2020. You're sitting here about to go into a new career and, and I think it's a, the cool thing to be at the moment is fuck 2020 and it can get fucked. But let's look back. Let's look at did you did you keep your job? Did you get a new career? Did you yeah you know. yeah I understand that. Oh. Uh, listen, but it's impossible to explain it to people. But, oh. People will still be thinking and doing stuff. If anything, people have been selfish and thinking for themselves before, but COVID has now brought it out. So do people gauge? Okay, I'm trying to get down to the nuts and bolts. Do people, we're talking about people gauging their leaders at this time of year. Do they gauge them based on a normal work year or do they ba- gauge them with the uh, no, uh, asterisks that are... 2020. Sh- 
well, uh, COVID and, and threats to jobs Absolutely. and job keeper and all that shit. That I believe, if we're gonna if we're gonna judge, it should be all encompassing and not in a in not in a vacuum where you go, oh, this year didn't quite go how I wanted it to go, so fuck them. Yeah, you know, because there's not one hit, well, there's not one person at this table who's going to say this year went exactly how I wanted it to go. <laughs> no, there isn't. Uh, unfortunately, we probably the fortunate ones. There's people who've lost their parents, who've lost the job, mm. who've uh, whose maybe husband or wives have lost their job, and they're working for us. And so uh, sometimes they're clinging on what we can do and what we can give, and uh, suddenly if we can't do and that we can't give, now we're the bad ones. It's how it works, man. This. So for leaders at this moment, it's it's I think it's for leaders and for staff members. They've got a great choice to finish the year off, but it's their own decision how they finish the year off. Don't let someone else dictate your happiness. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think that we all have a choice. Uh, uh, rather than s- blaming our leaders or gauging them for the whole year, I think that everyone can really look at what is it that they've done yeah. this year by the, for themselves, by themselves, right? And one, one of our motto in our recruit training is responsibility, which is no excuse. And it's a funny thing, you know, it's it's just in a few words and yet most people spend the entire year looking for somebody else to blame, isn't it? Yeah, I think that gratitude this time of the year, it's a, yeah, a season of giving and receiving. You have to understand, you have to learn. Not everybody can receive as well and be grateful for receiving. Yeah. They may brush it off and say, oh, that's not necessary, whatever. But be grateful for receiving what you're receiving and be thankful for what the year's brought you. Yes, it's been a challenging year, but what have we got out of this year? Regardless of what your leader does or regardless of what your staff member does, I think you've got your responsibility to yourself to have a fantastic end yeah. of the year. And I think that the responsibility is when you're gauging your leaders this year, look at what they've done for you. Yep. Rather than look at what they haven't done for you. Anthony Robbins says it very well. Yeah. Um, and I saw a, a documentary he did called Not My Guru. And he says to a lady who went through a shit upbringing, like terrible upbringing, he said, you can blame your mum for all the bad things, but you have to blame your mum for the good stuff in your life because you wouldn't be the person you are today without that. Yeah. And you know what? You can look at that, both sides of that coin. Good one, Chris. I think. That was not bad for you. You like that? I, I that think was good. That's huh? what, that, that is hey. ending on a high note, mate. Well done. <laughs> well done, well done buddy. buddy.